Okay, so today as we're giving thanks and our gratitude service, I'm going to be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 26, uh, reading from verse 1 through to verse 11. When you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling place for his name and say to the priest in office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our ancestors and gave us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord our, your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Aramean. And he went into the Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, subjecting us to harsh labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil and oppression. And so the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders." He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord and your God and bow down before him. Then you and the Levites and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. Amen. So as we're giving thanks, in the Old Testament, this moment of harvest was an important time. It's in fact called the Festival of Sukkot, which the Jews uh, recently, a couple of weeks ago, celebrated. The moment of God's abundant blessing on the people of Israel. And then at Sukkot, they would come and they would uh, celebrate this harvest of the first fruits. And they would give that to God as part of a celebration. So before they partook of any of the first of, of any of the harvest, they would take the first fruits and they would take that to the temple in giving thanks to God as a reminder that it is God who has blessed them with the abundance of a harvest. And if it wasn't for God in the first place, they would not have the harvest that they have. And so they would go and give it to God. And in that moment, in that act of offering the first fruits to God, it would be a moment of joyous thanksgiving, of gratitude. It wasn't a case of like, oh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to give this. It would be, no, God, you have blessed us. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have this harvest. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have this wheat and this grain and, and all these grapes and olives and all the rest of it. And so be, as an act of gratitude, we're going to take the first fruits and come and bring it to you joyfully because we wouldn't be able to give this to you in the first place if you hadn't given us the harvest, does that make sense? And because of the harvest, we can give thanks. The festival of Sukkot. Now, a lot of people have said to me, Gary, um, it, feels like, it feels like I'm spiraling into a place of real negativity, you know, in my life. It just feels like so much is going on that I'm done with COVID. I'm done with the regulations. I'm done with wearing a mask. Um, I'm done with the Zondo Commission. I'm done with Eskom and SABC on strike and, and all the rest of it. And I, I, I just feel so helpless. In fact, I'm getting to a place in that where I'm actually becoming increasingly frustrated with people around me. I'm coming f increasingly frustrated with things going around me and economically and financially and relationship, everything in that. And I find myself just spiraling. It feels... Like all I'm hearing is bad news all the time and it's very difficult for me. I feel like I've lost the joy of my life and I don't know how to find that joy again. And um, uh, I don't know which way to turn because it's affecting everything in my life. How is it that do I as a person who follows Christ, how, how do I even begin to make a difference? It feels like there is just so much going against me or against the church or against Christianity or against our country or against our family that I just don't know what to do anymore. I don't know if I can make a difference. In fact, some people have said to me, Gary, I've got to a place where I actually don't think I want to make a difference anymore. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm in that bad space. 
You know, and I, I, and I often say this to people, is that every single one of us has been given a circle of influence. And you know what, you're right. You and I, you know what, we're not going to fix the SABC. We're not going to fix Eskom. We're not going to fix the Zondo Commission. We're not going to fix uh, the DA, the EFF, the ANC. We're not going to be able to fix that. We're not, you know what, you and I single-handedly cannot fix the unemployment or the health or the poverty situation in our country. We can't. And we certainly can't fix Trump. You know, there's some things that are way beyond us, but God has given us a circle of influence. And if you just for a moment can take your eyes off the, the, the magnitude of the things that you and I are facing and take a moment and ask yourself, who is it that God has given you in your circle of influence that you can impact, that you can make a difference to? And I promise you now, friends, it'll change everything. So you either in a family, and you have a circle of influence in a family, you have a circle of friends. And, and even outside of that, you know, how you treat the waiters and waitresses, how you treat the petrol attendant, how you treat the per person who cares for your garden, how you treat the person who, who works in your home with you, how you treat people at the robots, that is your circle of influence. And if you can take a moment and not focus on the Eskom board or the SABC or on even the corona thing and say, God, I'm going to do whatever I can just to make an impact on the people around me, the people that you have given me influence. Now, I have a certain amount of influence. You have a certain amount of influence. Each of our circle of influence is important. How many people we influence, how big our circle is, is not important but recognizing that you have a circle of influence at home, at work, at varsity, at college, at um, uh, just going to the restaurant, just going to fill up your car, just going to, the, just going to, the, uh, to, to shop at Pick and Pay or Woolies. You have a circle of influence that God has put people around you to impact. A large degree, I don't know how many of you are, on, are into social media, but a large part of the problem that we face at the moment is that we are fed with stuff over social media that is crippling us. And you know the deal. You know how it works. Because you have Googled buying something on Google. And all of a sudden, on your Facebook feed, on your Twitter feed, and on your Instagram feed, all of a sudden, the stuff that you are Googling is coming up in Marketplace and is coming up as adverts in other ways. Because the way they've worked the algorithms of social media is they know what you're searching for and they know what you're looking for. So if you start searching stuff around Brackenfell High, there will be stuff that comes along your feed. If you're searching for clothes, it'll come across your feed. Let me tell you what happens, friends. The world is intent on feeding your fear. The world is intent on feeding your fear. And so when, and, and fear does that. So the more we start with it, the more we can't stop. For those of you who watch YouTube, you know what it's like? You start watching something, you know, cats being thrown into pools or whatever the case may be. And an hour later, you're busy watching firemen jumping out of trees, you know, or whatever the case may be. Because you know how the one leads to another. And so what happens is when the world feeds our fear. So when the world feeding our fear replaces the good news. And so we're, 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 we're this becomes more of an impact in our lives than this, we start having a problem. Because the world will feed our fear, the word will feed our joy. And we have to choose. Now, if you're stuck in the cycle of this, I'm going to ask you to do a bold thing today. I'm going to ask you to go on a social media fast for five days. Now, that's only if you know if I'm talking to you, you know if I'm talking to you or not. Where you sit and you can't get off this thing, off Facebook or off the, or off the gram or off, off Twitter and that, and the stuff is feeding your fear. And then you will know, because just like if you stop drinking co um, coffee or smoking or something like that, you will find if you really are in a difficult place when you start getting withdrawal symptoms, because you're not checking your social media. Or I'm going to ask you to stop for, to fast from watching the news 
or on a fast from reading the newspapers for five days and check your addiction level. And I want to say this to you, friends, that it will be life-changing. You see, it's difficult to get our heads into a space of, of, of having a, a, a heart of gratitude when we're fixed with our head filled with negativity and fear. Because we become so singularly focused on what's going wrong, about what isn't going right, about the stuff that could go wrong in our lives. We become so singularly focused in that. And I want to say for those who are watching us online and for those who are here, please hear me. The world will feed your fear. And out of response to that is an, is a, is an economic base. Now, I'm not a, one of those, um, what do you call those people who say no one landed on the moon? I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I do think they land on the moon, by the way. Um, but let me tell you something. Your fear is economy, e economically based. And so the world wants to feed this fear. And it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it affects our faith, and especially an attitude of gratitude. Now, the thing is this. God, on the other side, on the other hand, all right, comes to this place of saying, Part of dealing with our space of negativity and our place of defeat and fear is actually coming to God in faith with a grateful heart. Now, the thing about God, let me tell you something. God is so over the top. <laughs> I mean, big time. God is so overboard. Let me tell you something. He goes and he says, listen here, um, as, a, as a way of thanksgiving, bring me the first fruits. Okay, so you think, so the Israelites go and they, and they are truly grateful. They don't worry about the, whether there's going to be rain. They don't worry about whether the harvest is going to be okay. They don't worry if there's going to be any buyers. They come in faith where they could hoard the first fruits and hoard the first to, to keep them secure. But they in faith go to God and they give it to the priests at the temple. It doesn't end there. God then says to them, now don't forget the, in, in verse 1 or 2, whatever, God speaks about the they speak about how they'd come under the Egyptians and they toiled and they worked and it was hard and they were you know it was terrible being under slavery under the Egyptians, but right after verse eleven, he, I mean in verse 11, 10, 11, he starts saying to them, oh, and by the way, when you finish there, don't forget the foreigners. Don't forget the foreigners. Don't forget the widows. Don't forget the orphans. That is just the beginning of it, and I'm going to speak about that a little bit later. Now, if we're going to give thanks to God, and if we're going to change our, our attitude from an attitude of fear and negativity and spiring out of control, and we want to turn it into one in which we're offered life in all its fullness, we need to do just two things. One is that we, we have to give thanks and remember that God is the source of all good things. Hold on to that with all that you've got, that God is the source of all good things. The ability to give thanks with a joyful heart begins with recognizing that God is the source of all good things and he will always be faithful towards his children. Remembering what God has done, remembering what God continues to do, remembering what God has made possible, remembering that God has mercifully prevented things from happening to us that, you know, see the, Deuter the right hand Deuteronomy teaches us to remember, which is the point of today's reading, that we are to remember God is the one who is faithful and provides, not us. So when we give of our first fruits or when we are generous or when we give, it's a reminder that God is the one who provides, not us. And let me tell you something, giving and being generous is an important corrective behavior to deal with our egos. We, we are suffering as a community from ego issues where we keep on going, well, you know what? It's us that have done all these things. It's our ability. It's our gifting. It's our hard work. But giving thanks helps us to remember who is actually in charge and where everything we have comes from. Giving thanks is a helpful reminder that God is the source of all goodness. Now, human nature, by the way, hasn't changed in 
much since the time of the ancient Israelites. You know, as human beings, we still like to pat ourselves on the back. We still like to say, it was me. I did it. It was my gifting. It was all of this stuff. You know, we have this need when things are going well, don't we do this? We are the hero of the day. We have done well. And when things go wrong, that's God's fault. The minute things go wrong, it's God's fault. God, why have you allowed this? God, why has this happened? God, why haven't you? But when things go well, often God is the last person to get the recognition or the praise. And so when we give thanks to God, when we are generous, when we are all of those things, we are acknowledging that God is in control. The Bible warns us never to forget that God and God alone is the source of all that we have and all that we are and all that is to come. And the second thing I want to say is this, is when we give thanks, it's about sharing God's gifts and blessings with others. So here in the Deuteronomy it says, okay, go and give um, your first fruits to the, to the priest and into the temple, and then go and give to the foreigners. Now we've just been reminded about how cruel the Egyptians were. How cruel the Egyptians were. Now you can speak to any South African or person living in South Africa that wasn't born in South Africa. We have a serious issue of xenophobia in this country as it seems to be all over the world. It's almost like as if this, this piece of dirt that I'm standing on now for some reason makes me better than the piece of dirt that you're standing on across the river. It's insane. But you see how God is so over the top. He's going, okay, now bring the first fruits in that. And by the way, even before you sort yourselves out, make sure that the foreigners amongst you, in fact, it says this, it says, that the, not only must you sort out the foreigners, but the foreigners will be filled with joy because of your generosity. Now imagine how that brings about unification between locals and foreigners. Imagine that, 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 that everyone is happy. I'm happy to share, not only with those who are like me, but to share with those who are unlike me. And the sharing and generous thing is really important. You, uh, you have been blessed so that you can be a blessing to others. And I want to say this to you, that God ultimately has given us a heart of generosity. And so when we are generous, God himself explodes, it says, with joy. I want you to imagine this just for a moment, if I can bring it to practical terms out of these two scenarios. I want you to imagine that when we live with a, with a heart of gratitude and saying, the reason why I have is because I'm meant to be a blessing to other people. So I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine God in these two scenarios of how God would react, how you think he would react. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of the fact that as I'm saying it, it's actually feeling quite like I'm being manipulative, so can I ask you to give me just a moment of grace, if you don't mind, as I say this, and, and rather get the spirit behind what I'm saying. Is that okay? So I'm owning that up front. But I want you to imagine this for a moment, okay? I go and I'm deciding that I'm going to be generous, all right? And so I go and buy clothes, or I go and, or, or, or I go and, um, or I go and eat out somewhere. And I'm then beyond generous to the waiter, more than the, as God would lead me. And then on the way out in that, in the, in the car, I don't know about you and that, but when I get to the fifth shopping center having to give money to the car guard, I want to go mental. Because I was just like, I just don't, you know, I just don't have any more change or whatever the case may be. But I'm wondering in that, you know, that as I leave the shopping center and I spent a thousand rand on clothes or 400 rand on a, on a food or five or whatever the case may be, as I go out in that and I think to myself, oh, you know, Sick and tired of these car guards. Sick and tired of this and all the rest of it. I'm just cursing because I can't find change and all the rest of it and that. I'm wondering in that moment and that what God's response is as he looks at this interaction of mine. As opposed to me coming out and going, I just spent like a thousand rand on clothes or five hundred rand on clothes or I've just spent 400 rand on a meal. 
And so what, when I'm eating that, instead of having my third cappuccino, I'm going to take that 35 rand that I would have spent on my third cappuccino or third beer. Of course, I'm not talking to you because I know none of you drink beer. Or my third beer, and instead of that, I'm actually going to keep that money to give it to the car guard, the value of it. And so when I come out in that, because I've been so blessed that I've been able to buy clothes and I've been able to have a, a, a generous meal of choosing what I want, then when I come out, I've been blessed. And so because of that, I want to be a blessing to someone else. I want to share my joy of the fact is that everything I have comes from God. Now I'm wondering if, if God in that moment is going to be going, Gary, you're such a fool, man. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You don't know what the rand dollar is going to do tomorrow. You're crazy, man. Hold on to your money. Rather, don't share it with anyone. Keep it, because you never know. Save it for a rainy day. Or is God going to go, that's the type of spirit I like. And in fact, I can trust Gary with more. Because I know he's not going to hoard it. I know he's not going to hold on to it. I know that he's a man of faith. I know that he's a sharer. I know that he's put his faith and his trust in me. So you know what? I'm going to entrust him with more. Or is God going to be going, well done, Gary, keep it all. Brilliant. That car God can sort himself out. He must get a real job and a real education. And, you know, or just hide, your, hide from him, Gary. Don't let him see you. So when you reverse, whatever you do, don't look at him. Because if you don't look at him, he might not see you and you might not have to give him money. And so you quickly leave without, you know he's there, but you're not going to acknowledge him. That's the spirit. Now, it's simplistic, I know, so forgive me for that. But I think you get the gist of what I'm saying. I think you get the gist of what I'm saying. All that we have, God is the source of all that is good. I always remind people, when you get your paycheck, no longer a paycheck, when you get whatever your salary, don't ever be mistaken of thinking that your company is the source of that income for you. That comes directly from God. And God merely uses the company that you work through or the business that you do to feed it into your hands. It comes from God. All goodness, everything, all good things come from God. And then what we do with that speaks about our attitude of gratitude, speaks about our, our, where we are in life, speaks about how things are happening and what is happening in our life and how we treat those around us. So full circle, let me wrap up while it's not raining so you can go outside and baptize quickly. You're either going to live by fear or faith. Those are the two choices, friends. You're either driven by fear or you're driven by faith. There is a lot going against you and I. There's millions and millions and millions of dollars that will try and persuade your thinking, your marketing, what you wear, what you drive, where you live, small habits, big habits, what you eat, where you eat. Millions of dollars invested in that. That will ultimately guide you and steer you. That will ultimately feed your fear. That will spiral you into a place of negativity in a dark pit that's very difficult to get out of. Or you can choose to live by faith. You can choose to live by faith and believe that everything that you have that is good comes from God. And then because of that, you and I have a responsibility to be a blessing to others so we can lift them up. This world is not about you or me. Can we somehow get out of that backslapping, egotistical way of living, of thinking it's all about me, or how much more can I get, to a place in which we put a cloth over our arm and we ask, how may I serve you? How may I serve you? To live a life of faith and not of fear. Let us pray. Yes, Lord. Indeed, you call us to live a life of faith and of generosity. 
Forgive us, Lord God, if we have been the backslapping ego type. Forgive us, Lord God, if we've allowed the world to feed our fear. We want to be men and women of faith, strong faith, that stand firm. We want to be men and women who are generous beyond means and celebrate your goodness. We want to thank you, God, for every blessing that you have given us. We want to thank you, God, for everything that has come from you. In Jesus' name, amen.